Yeah, 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 yeah. We back at it, y'all. Once again, brothers and sisters, first and foremost, shout out to the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, which is the Lord of my life. Big shout out to you too for giving me the opportunity to share. Part two, you know, as far as the most dangerous sin is pride. James chapter four, verses six, seven said, but God opposes the proud, but gives grace to the humble. So let, let me let me just elaborate a little bit on this one is that you want to be very, very careful, y'all. You know, if he opposed the proud, which is the prideful, he gives grace to the humble. He didn't say he opposes the pride of his people and gives grace only to his people. That's humble. That goes. Downright over over all do all. If you humble yourself before the father. No matter believer or non-believer, he will give you grace. That's his word. But if you're prideful before him, he will oppose you, whether believer or unbeliever. So pride is the most dangerous sin. You know, people's pride. Um, say, for example, today I went to try to, you know, I was recycling my bottles and everything like that. And most people, they're too prideful. They're not rich. They're not even close to being rich. But they're too prideful to recycle a bottle in which you get five cent off of each bottle. And you're getting charged if you're buying the bottle waters or whatever in that regard. So you might as well recycle and get at least the money that you're paying for the bottle tax back. Before, back in the days, they didn't charge you for it. But now, they have like, you know what? People are recycling bottles, getting money off it. The government's like, yo, we're going to start charging you for it. <laughs> Shout out to them for <laughs> wising up. So I told a lady, I said, yo, you know what, man, will be better for you to, you know, huh, you do what I do, put your bottles in the shopping cart so therefore you don't have to keep bending over and putting more strain on your lower back or your upper back. She had like three or four bags. Nah, I'm good, I'm good. Why? Because of her pride and everything. <laughs> so I just went my way, try to help you, but because of your pride. And it's just pride, it's foolish pride. It's nothing wrong with having pride of yourself, being confident in yourself. That's good pride. But arrogant pride, you know what I'm saying? Stubbornness, rebelliousness, all this stuff is pride. God opposes all that. He only gives grace to the humble and everything. So we as people of Christ, or people in general, we need to be more humble when we address one another. We definitely got to be humble before him first and foremost. If he woke you up this morning, sometimes you're proud to be, oh, you know what? No, nah, I don't want to get on my knees and pray. You know, I'll thank him later. Get rid of the pride, y'all. Humble yourselves. You know, last example, um, your pride will make you like somebody, Proverbs 12, 1. It say, he who loves knowledge, love discipline. But he who hates correction is stupid. Why is a person stupid? Now, the father is saying that you're stupid. Why is that person stupid? Why? Because his pride. Your pride will cause you to hate being corrected. And the person that's correcting you, obviously, because you're in error. But because you're so prideful, you can't be corrected. Therefore, the father say you're stupid. Now, I'm not one to call one stupid. But if God say you're stupid, that means you're stupid. And why is he saying you're stupid? Because you're too proud, too prideful to get corrected. And I've seen that from the greatest, from those in leadership, and to the least, pride. I see that exist. I see people get so prideful and they boast about their sins that they no longer struggle with. Arrogance. And then next thing you know, that temptation or the, or the enemy does attack that person who think that he or she overcome whatever sin they were dealing with. Now they fall hard in their face. Scripture again, 1 Corinthians 10, 12. If you think you are standing firm, be careful that you not fall. Why? Because you get prideful. You think you, okay, I overcome. I've been delivered. I'm saved from this. That's why if you watch these people with um, Alcohol Anonymous, they always have that same prayer. Give me the, you know, and that's a deep prayer. Why? They always go and confess and you know what? I'm a, I'm a, I'm a, rec I'm an alcoholic. Or I'm a recovering alcoholic. Why? To keep themselves humble to know who they are. But we as believers, we get arrogant, you know, oh yeah, man, I've been sober for five years. I've been pure for such and such year. But then that temptation come and you fall, you fall hard on your face. Why? You didn't have to fall, but because you was arrogant and your pride is what caused you to fall again. You know, people's pride usually kills them. Some people say, for example, if a person try to rob you, right? People have died and lost their lives because of their pride. 
If somebody try to rob you of your jewelry or money, give it up. Give it up. These things can be replaced. You can't be replaced. But some people, you'll hear, you hear them saying, yo, man, I'll die for my jewelry. That don't make no sense. That's pride. That's arrogance and stupidity. And people have lost their lives for materialistic items, whether it's money, whether it's jewelry, cars, houses, and all these things. You cannot be replaced. These things can be replaced. And I understand you put your money into it. I understand. Trust me. My level of understanding is there. Don't mean I agree. Somebody try to rob me and everything. I won't want to give up my stuff too. But it's either give it up, you know, give it up. Or next thing you know, now my life is over. Eliminate your pride, y'all. You know what I'm saying? Let's humble ourselves. Because God opposes the proud and give grace only to the humble. With that being said, brothers and sisters, have a great week. You know, it's Monday night. You know, shout out to um, the women's basketball I think, what was it, South Carolina? I think that one. Shout out, big shout out to them. Shout out to the coach at Duke. He coached his last season. Great coach. Shout out to my man, Hubert Davis. I was a big Hubert Davis fan when he was with the Knicks. Shout out to him and everything that beat the coach from Duke. Shout out to him. I didn't even know he was coaching North Carolina. I did not know that. But shout out to him. But once again, y'all, just wanted to elaborate on them, you know, give accomplishments to them and shout out to my cousin little steve you know what i'm saying he got a cdl and everything like that big big shout out to him you know but once again and in closing god opposes the proud the pride or the proud or the prideful whatever way you want to say it but he only gives grace to the humble let's stay humble y'all humility will always bless you always and everything all right Jesus bless. Have a great week and continue to keep marching. Whatever's going on, continue to move forward. Keep marching. All right. Love you all. Jesus bless.